Over the holidays, you might have some time to catch up on new films at home or to venture out to the theaters. To help guide us on the best ones to add to your list, Jeffrey Brown speaks to two film critics on their top picks of the year. It's for our arts and culture series, Canvas. Union strikes caused delays and other bumps in the road in Hollywood this year, but some films still stuck out from the crowd. To tell us about this year's best films, I'm joined by Justin Chang, film critic of the Los Angeles Times, and Linda Holmes, host of NPR's Pop Culture Happy Hour. Nice to see you both. Justin, why don't I start with you? Why don't you give us a couple of your favorites? Yeah, hi, Jeff. My favorite movie of the year really snuck up on me. It's called All of Us Strangers. And it's the latest from the English writer-director, Andrew Hay. It tells the story of a lonely screenwriter who's played in a quietly gut-wrenching performance by Andrew Scott. Yeah, you ready? I'm gonna press it. Merry Christmas. Oh, Merry Christmas. Here you go. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. I don't want to say too much about it. It's a gay love story. It's a drama about parent-child reconciliation. And it's also, and this is not a spoiler, it's a ghost story. I haven't seen a more intimate movie this year. Um, what makes it work, I think, is that it's really hauntingly ambiguous on one hand, but it's completely emotionally direct and satisfying on the other. And it features what is, for me, the acting ensemble of the year with not only Andrew Scott, but also Paul Mescal, Claire Foy, and Jamie Bell. A very different movie that I also loved is The Zone of Interest, which is Jonathan Glazer's chilling and searing drama about a Nazi commandant and his family living next door to Auschwitz. This is a movie I hesitate to describe as a Holocaust drama because it so completely subverts what we've been conditioned to expect about Holocaust dramas. It is very much about the banality of evil, but the movie itself is never banal. Um, and it's the opposite of holiday cheer this season, but it <laughs> is a movie that I hope audiences will embrace the challenge of because I think it's rewarding to, to watch. All right, so Linda Holmes, do you have any cheer for us? Uh, those were two independent and pretty heavy films. What's on your list? I did love a lot of heavy films this year, but I'm also happy to, to provide a couple that have maybe a little more cheer. Mm -hmm. um, I am one of the many people who enjoyed Barbie. I very much admired all the crafts that were on display in that film, the production design, the scoring, the costuming, all of that stuff I thought was, was wonderful. And I think the story in the end just was much more interesting. Greta Gerwig in, in writing and directing that just did much more with it than pay, maybe people expected. And another and one- clearly I, struck a chord. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, theatrical distribution still needs some big hits. That's mm -hmm. still a really good thing for theaters. And I was really happy to see that happen. Another one I would mention is The Holdovers, which is uh, from Alexander Payne. And it's about these three people who are stuck over the holiday break in a school. And it is Paul Giamatti as this very grumpy teacher. Mm -hmm. uh, and then a, one of the kids that is in his class, and then the woman played by uh, Devine Joy Randolph, who plays the woman who runs the food service. And they all get stuck there. I think it's a beautiful movie. It's very generous to its characters. And to me, it's warm without being cloying. That's, that was how I uh, responded to it. You know, Justin, I was just thinking about Barbie getting back to this big and small and that moment of Barbie. And I think you had Oppenheimer on as one of your favorites from the year. That moment of Barbie and Oppenheimer, was that a, how does it feel now? Was it a one-off? Did it have a lasting effect? It's hard to say. I mean, it did feel like one of those unpredictable and perhaps unrepeatable phenomena. I remember going into a theater, not even to see Barbie or Oppenheimer, both of which I enjoyed very much in different ways. Uh, I went to see another movie and just seeing theaters like crowded on a Monday night. And I, I think the lessons of both these movies is that Here. personal vision and uh, big budget blockbuster filmmaking can and should merge together in a way that they so rarely do. My concern about it is that um, it was so heartening to see two filmmakers that I respect as much as Greta Gerwig and Christopher Nolan succeed in this way. My fear is that it just contributes to the eventization of movies. You know, I love event movies. I love being enthralled with an audience to a really big, glorious vision. Um, but as a film critic, I'm concerned with the audience going to movies on a regular basis to make it a regular part of their, their entertainment diet rather than just an exception. But what a glorious exception it was. Want to give us another one that uh, fits any category you like? I mean, what are you telling people at this time of year that they I, should see? 
I cannot resist bringing up one that I really liked that I know Justin didn't like at all because oh. I think sometimes that's the most interesting, <laughs> which is Saltburn, which is this very extravagantly vulgar, loopy thriller that was made by Emerald Fennell, who made Promising Young Woman a couple mm -hmm. years ago. My parents, they've got problems. What kind of, what do you mean problems? I don't think I'll ever go home again. Well, why don't you come home with me? Very divisive movie. I knew walking out of the theater how divisive it, if it was. And I've actually really enjoyed talking to people about it. I've heard a lot of smart people who can't stand it and really smart people who thought it was terrific. It's, it's my favorite thing that happens is when people have smart conversations about divisive things. Ah, OK, well, Justin, you can either push back on that or maybe go positive and come up with another one that divided people but you liked. In a spirit of holiday charity, I will say that while I did not like Saltburn, as Linda says, <laughs> I do think that Rosamund Pike gives one of the great comic performances of the year in it. And Jacob Elordi, who's also great in Sofia Coppola's uh, Priscilla, really does terrific work in Saltburn as well. So, um, but very generous, another movie very generous. <laughs> You're welcome. Um, another favorite of mine uh, to branch into animation is The Boy and the Heron, um, which uh, is the latest and maybe the last, although we've heard that before, from the 82-year-old Japanese anime master Hayao Miyazaki. If you like Spirited Away and Princess Mononoke and Howl's Moving Castle and other Miyazaki films, it's a safe bet you will like this one too. Um, it, it's a gorgeously drawn and surreal and inventive piece of animation. But what makes it so moving is it's also very much the story of an older man, perhaps Miyazaki himself, looking back at a younger version of himself and and asking questions like, how do we reconcile the pain of the real world and the escapism of fantasy? Um, it, it's a beautiful film and, and I think a profound one too. And just in our last minute, Linda Holmes, as, it's hard to talk about this year without, of course, thinking about the strike. Mm -hmm. Do you see any impact now, or are you looking for it to come, or where, where does, has that left things? You'll see some films that are delayed. There are some that are already being delayed, so it's going to take a while for the um, schedule to kind of reset. Mm -hmm. But I, you know, I, I was so heartened by the fact that, you know, we've mentioned just a handful of movies here, but there are uh, so many that were great this year that are still coming out. American Fiction is great. I like The Iron Claw, which is about to come out. Justin, brief last word. I am just heartened by the fact that as devastating as the strike was, you know, I think writers and actors are happy to return to work. And I think they've seen that the power that solidarity can accomplish and that they can and should be remunerated in accordance with their work. I mean, they make this business run. And so uh, I it's it's just a shame that um, it took the devastating losses and 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 just uh, pain of the strike um, in order to accomplish that. So but hopefully the season will be a good one for all of them. All right, Justin Chang of the Los Angeles Times, Linda Holmes of NPR Pop Culture Happy Hour. Thank you both very much. Thank you. You for having me.